Okay, what I'm going to talk about now is the alternators. Um, the alternators that they used pretty much from the start of production till the end is what I've got pictured here. On the left is the Chrysler Marine alternator. That was Chrysler's own unit that they used from the start of production on VH till about 1972. See, I got marked on here through 72. Uh, it looks very similar to a car alternator. In fact, a car alternator will bolt up. Uh, the front and everything is the same. Uh, the big difference and what makes a marine alternator a marine alternator is it's spark arrested. See, it's got this Bakelite brush housing. Uh, it's very, very brittle. Now that these things are 50 years old or better, uh, they are getting very, very hard to find and they are, like I said, very brittle. You have to be very, very careful when you tighten up this terminal here. This is the field terminal. See the bottom one's got a ground strap. Uh, this is a B circuit alternator, so that means the one brush is grounded and the field is controlled uh, on the 12 volt side, the positive side. So when you tighten this terminal here, we always tell people to use an end wrench. Do not over torque this. It is very easy to pull this stud out of this Bakelite housing and ruin it and then you're in tennis shoe mode. So you don't wanna do that. Very, very careful. This is the voltage regulator on the right that is used with this system, and this is what they call the field relay. Even though it really doesn't control the field, they also use these in a lot of these early systems. Basically what this did, as you see it says alternator out, that goes to the alternator output stud, which is right here. So there's an orange wire that goes from here to here. There's a red wire that goes from the battery to the positive side of the starter solenoid where your battery cable is. And this has a purple wire from the ignition switch. So basically, with the key off, there was no power to the alternator. Okay, that's all this did. When the key was off, the alternator had no power. When the key was on, this relay closed terminals and puts power to that stud. All right, on the regulator, this is the old mechanical style regulator. Uh, you can see that uh, it, it grounds when it mounts. Okay, so when it bolted up to the metal bracket behind the distributor, it's grounded there. Uh, this is the field terminal. So this wire here goes directly to this terminal. You gotta be very, very careful tightening. And this terminal here goes to the ignition switch. So that's your key on power. So that is the early 1972-ish and down Chrysler. From 72 to 86, small and big blocks, they use this all here. This was Prestolite, uh, ANE 5201 and ANE 5202. Uh, they do interchange as far as mounting to the engine. Uh, there are a couple internal differences, uh, but it does not matter. There's a different length rotor, and actually this uh, rear housing is a little bit different. But the actual mount to the block uh, is the same. Similar situation here. Uh, this is your main stud here, the big guy, and the top one is the field. This here is auxiliary. This is not used in the marine engines. So you'll have your green wire from your field going here, and you'll have your orange 10-gauge wire here originally. So again, this is not used. If you hook this to the regulator, it won't charge. So you've got to make sure the green wire is on the field. A lot of times these mount upside down, they hang down. So it's technically the bottom, I guess, as it's mounted to the engine. Um, this is the regulator that they used. Okay, this press light regulator. Again, grounds when it grounds when it mounts. This stud here, I believe, was a push terminal originally and did not use this uh, nut, at least the later ones were. And again, this goes right to the field. So from that little guy here to here, green wire, that's your field, okay? This red wire is uh, dual purpose. Uh, it is also the exciter wire, so it's hot when the key's on, a full 12 volts, and it's also the sense wire. So if I have a bad connection or low voltage sensed here, it's gonna tell that alternator to charge more. So this is on the 12 volt side of the ballast resistor, not the resisted side. So this is a common source of issues, bad connections, and so forth. This little terminal here. So grounds when it mounts, 12 volt with the key on, and this stud to the field. And the last production is 87 to 91. This was also a Prestolite or a Motorola. Uh, this mounting is all by itself. Um, nothing else really mounts to this other than the uh, this style alternator uh, without a bunch of modifications. You see it's only got a... It's got a two inch bottom mirror instead of the old school style, you know, bigger holes. So these things are a little bit harder to find. Uh, obviously, Chrysler production in 8791 wasn't that great as they were winding down. Um, this has an internal regulator. Um, main output stud is here. These two terminals are not used in Chrysler. They were used in other marine manufacturers, but not Chrysler. Um, and this is your exciter wire. 
Now on the 87 to 91 engines, they use an oil pressure switch. Uh, I'm sure that you've probably seen them leak before. They're very common to leak. Uh, but behind the distributor, there's an oil pressure port there with like three senders. Uh, one, the big one is for the oil pressure gauge. Uh, there's a single wire one for the alarm if the boat builder used it. And then there's a two wire switch. Uh, and you'll notice that the two wire switch, one has power all the time on that switch and the other one goes to this terminal. So when the engine starts up and has oil pressure, it puts power to this terminal to excite the alternator. So uh, again, that is very key on this. And like I say, this is the internal regulator right here. There's nothing else used on these 87 to 91 uh, alternator setups. And you know, the last one I'll talk about is the Chinese replacement that is oh so popular. This alternator here will replace these two alternators there, okay? So you can use the 10SI knockoff, as I call it, uh, to replace the old, old school Chrysler alternator and the early Prestolite alternator. So basically from 86 and down, this guy could be a solution for you. Couple things to note on this. It does have an internal regulator, so all you have to hook up is one wire, hence the term one wire alternator. Your orange wire goes here and that's it. You can see that they basically modified the uh, bottom instead of like a GM alternator and converted it to use for the Chryslers. It's got the same mounting as the old school and the middle school, see? And again, 87 to 91, can't put that on. It's got a different ear, see? So, again, th these are decent units. You know, like I say, they are Chinese. They do work uh, depending on where you're located and, you know, auto electric shops are getting tougher to find. You know, finding somebody to repair this one or this one or even this one can be challenging, you know. Folks like uh, us, uh, rebuild electricity stuff is uh, going by the wayside. So that's why this is a viable option for a lot of people because you can just buy it for a hundred and some dollars and put it on. You know, the quality's been okay on them, uh, but that's just my opinion. But anyway, that's the story uh, on these Chrysler alternators. So hope you enjoyed it.